Hey, you guys. Hey, guys. So a little bit different. We're outside today, so if you hear kids in the background or if you hear water, water or people, um, we just needed to do it on our lunch today. We've been had a kind of a crazy week, so. Sick baby. Sick baby. Never good. You know, He's better. The wake stuff going on. Yep. And a whole bunch of different so, things. So we're here with you now, and this week our topic is supernatural transformation. Yeah, keep that turned so I can see it a little bit there. All right, so yeah, here not we go. That far. Okay, yep. I'm adjusting our notes. <laughs> we're not, you know, we're not that cool. We can't yeah. do it like without notes. So. It's still a lot of fun though. Yeah. So and being outside is neat. So you go. Oh, oh, I go. You go. Yep. So listen, some people <laughs> would say, uh, in all truth and honesty, that um, no married couple. Uh, should hope to enjoy the glory of heaven while they are still living on earth. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what Jesus says. No. Jesus says that through um, that with man, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Um, that's found in Matthew nineteen twenty six. just in case you want to go look it up. Yep. So the question we have, just starting out with you guys today, we're going to start with a question. I know we normally talk and then go into a question, but we're going to start with this question. And the question is, hold on, wait for it. Um, the question is, how have you, stop wiggling, whoa. I'm trying to get you in the center, sorry. How have you been a good spouse in order to make your marriage or relationship better? Better. Yeah, I like this question. So yeah. in other words, what have you done to change? So we've all had things that we want to change in our relationships, um, things that we realize that aren't good for ourselves. And, and let me remind you, um, Spouses, you can't change your other half. No. You can only change your half. So with that in mind, uh, take a second and ask that question. How have you been a good spouse in order to make your marriage relationship better? And um, what have you done to change? Yeah. Pause. Yeah. Okay. So we're back. Um, and here's the thing. I'm sure you took a second. I hope you took a second and talked about it because it really is something. Or if you've got some things in your mind that you thought about, you know, what I've, what you've done to change, all the things that you've tried to do. The thing about that is, is it's, it's great to be a good partner. It's incredible to try to use like behavior modification and, you know, uh, good books. There's lots of good books out there to teach you how to be a good spouse. But the reality is nothing's going to change without supernatural transformation. I mean, you can try to change all you want, but it's not going to be anything that sets and stone. It's not going to be anything that's lasting. Be, we call those modifications. Right, those are modifications. So when yeah. you actually have a supernatural transformation, then you'll have behaviors and character that will not revert back. Yeah. Like, it'll be so drastically different that people go, who are you and what did you do with my, <laughs> what'd you do with this my other husband? person? Or what did you do with my husband or my wife? We have so a, we've got a cool story we that Jason's going to share with you. Us, which is kind of crazy. Um, this was years ago. It was like 11 years ago. And yeah. it set us on a course for where we are today. Yeah, I went on a um, – I had a friend of mine that invited me to go on a retreat weekend that I had no uh, – I really had no understanding of what the value of the retreat weekend was going to be. But um, – here I was, uh, I was still wrapped up in deep in addiction, both pornography and um, alcohol, drugs, and yet we were still trying to go to church. We were still trying to, yeah, we'd, trying we'd to do the right Christians thing. We had been four Christians years, been attending church saved, for four years. But I just, these habits and these sins in my life were still keeping me from a real relationship with God and mm -hmm. a real relationship with my wife. Right. And they were just brutal. Um so my it was wife, like the day before you left, It right? was. It was like a Wednesday night. My wife had left and went to spend the night at her mother. She was going to stay there while I was gone for the weekend right, to get some help kids. with the kids. Mm -hmm. And here, ooh, Bert. Um, and then here I was sitting in my living room, um, and not to be too vulgar, but I had a, a beer in one hand, a joint in another hand, cigarettes in the ashtray, staring at a blank screen on the TV. And I'd audibly, honestly heard the Lord say to me, is this what you're going to be like when you get back? And... Uh, and it kind of froze me because uh, I was ready for something more. Uh, yeah. I was ready for something deeper in the Lord. I wanted, I had heard that there was power in God and I had not yet experienced it. I, I went to church, you know, we'd been going to church for a couple of years, but I didn't yeah. experience God. So I picked up the telephone. I called the guy that was sending me. He's a friend. They call him sponsors on the weekends. And I said, hey, man. Listen, here I am sitting here with all this stuff, and I want this done. I don't want to come back to this. Right, so he offered to pray with you. That's all he did. He just said, hey, well, let's pray then. And right. I, I was completely dumbfounded, but the truth is he prayed. I poured out every single beer. 
I crushed every cigarette and I flushed the marijuana and I was done. I, I went on the weekend. I was totally receptive to the Lord. I got a little bit sick, but I was totally receptive to the Lord. I totally was ready for him to wreck my life and to totally turn it upside down from what I knew. Right. But what he wanted from me. Right. And what happened on that weekend? I received a call, a call from the Lord to the better me, who he intended me to be. And right. that was the most powerful thing. Yeah, and that and I think the the true testimony is where Jason is now and where we are in our marriage is that moment set us on a destiny. And that moment really set us up for the marriage we have, the family we have, the ministry we have, everything. And, yeah. and the cool thing was that night, uh, it was like Sunday night when he got back, I was at a friend's house waiting for him to get back and pick me up to go home from the weekend. Um, I'd been spending time with her. And he, uh, he shows up and he opens the door and I can literally see a white glow, like a figure, almost like a halo. I know that sounds silly, but that's what happened um, behind him. And it was the first time in, uh, I'd ever seen anything supernatural in the natural realm. And it was amazing to me. And I knew that God had marked him and that he was truly transformed and that it was going to be uh, a different marriage, a different life from that point forward. And the truth is you've never, was, you've never. No, I never went back. That was a real transformation. That was a. Back that was to a, those, to those addictions and yeah. those uh, behaviors and God just That really was a caterpillar to butterfly experience. Absolutely. Right. And that's, and that's what I want to do is just kind of, what is transformation? We need to define that. So what a true, what true transformation is, is exactly like a butterfly. Um, the book used the word metamorphosis for, uh, for transformation. And it's, it really is, um, a metamorphosis from who you are to who you're created to be. So it's, it's where you are now to where God's created you. And, you know, there's, there's lots of multiple levels um, of of this transformation and it all begins in in the the soul realm and our soul is made up of our mind our will our emotions and our imaginations which I'd always heard mind will and emotion but I was I was reading it said in our imaginations and I thought man you know that's something that's so unsurrendered Absolutely. to the Lord um, a lot of times we don't think about that our imaginations need to get in line with who God is and need to be transformed. But when we see these things transformed, then we know that there's these are powerful tools for a yeah, spectacular because when you have a transformed when you have a transformed soul, a transformed mind, will, and emotions, and then you have a transformed for God imagination. Right. Imagine what you could do. Right. <laughs> like build a coffee house <laughs> oh, with nothing oh, and with no money <laughs> and amazing people and who amazing are just friends <laughs> who live in community and. Uh, yeah. Hey, do the cool things like get to sit in a park and do a vlog. I mean, like this is never, ever in the cards for things us. Things that we've dreamed about doing. Yeah, things we've dreamed. I mean, we talked about doing this, oh my gosh, years ago. And the funny thing is, is God used our marriage um, and our desire to have a supernatural marriage to do this, to be able yeah. to step into something that we talked about for years and years. In fact, it was so long ago that we talked about it that this wasn't even possible. No, it wasn't possible. Then. So, in case you're wondering how old we are. Really not that I'm old because technology moves so fast these days. It's I'm really childlike. I'm not, not childish. That, right, right. So, so here you go. You got your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your imagination surrender to God for transformation. How do you know that you've had a transformation? How do you know? Um, you're nice to each other. Yeah, I mean, you can be nice to each other without supernatural transformation. You don't pass gas in the same room anymore. That's enough. Oh. <laughs> And that's not true anyway. <laughs> okay. No, it's two things. One is supernatural peace. Yeah. And so there's a scripture that says that peace that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. So when we have like a tragedy or we have something go on where it's like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through this? And you know, you feel that supernatural peace of God when you just surrender to him and he just gets you through it. And I mean, there are several times and I'm not going to go into the testimonies, but of things that have happened in our lives where, you know, the supernatural peace is what carried us and it was Absolutely. definitely evidence. But in our marriage, yeah. that that's another, that's a sign of supernatural marriage is, is just to be carriers of peace where people look at you and go, gosh, they just, they really get along. Things look really yeah, good for them absolutely. in their marriage. And even though that it's not always perfect, it's the, the peace of God that rests on it. Yeah. And the second thing Sometimes is, it, it in itself, the peace that we have through situations has been testimony to oh, others. Yeah. I mean, we've been in conversations with people and they're like, how can you be so calm right now? <laughs> It's like because we just we trust the Lord Jesus and we know who God is. We love him. Period. 
I wonder how many times I said I love him. What did we do? Yeah, last night we were talking about me and the shaking thing that I got going on, and I was just totally at peace, and it calmed her down because she got a little wearied about it, you know. But you know, it's going to be true. Gone. And I thought about it today, and I, 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 you know, you've been working out. That's why your muscles are shaking. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. But the the second one is supernatural fruit. And um, so that's the fruit of the spirit, love, yeah. joy, peace, patience, kindness, kindness gentleness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Goodness, I messed it up. Anyway. Yeah. It's all those go things. Go read it. It's in yeah, Galatians. Where's it at? Galatians. It's in Galatians. Yeah. I, it's Galatians chapter 6. I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> things that you would be evidenced. Things that would be evidenced in your transformation. That's what would happen there. And, and one of the things that you can really, really see in a marriage that's transformed in the area of a fruit and peace is honor. Oh, yeah. Honor is my favorite thing in the whole world. And honor is truly what Jesus talked about when he said to, to prefer others more than yourself. Yeah. To lay your life down for your friend. That's honor. Honor is saying, you know what, Jason? Because God created you and God loves you. You could look at me. That'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking about what you were saying. I was just saying <laughs> because yeah. God created you and God loves you, it is my joy to honor you and prefer you over myself. Yeah, absolutely. And not only do I prefer you it's over true. myself, but um, you know Jesus gave two two commandments for us: one, to love others as yourself, um, to love Him, of course, first, first love right? others as Himself. But when He talks about wives, He says to prefer them over yourself. He does that. He actually you know, says, as yeah. Christ. Love the love church the church. and gave himself exactly. up I thought her. that was a cool concept that I had not had really a thought of until I read this. Is you know, uh, It was a sneaking thought. It was like, well, yeah, Jesus told us to love others as we love ourselves. Yeah, but when he talked about your spouse, he said to prefer them over yourself. Yeah. That's that Christ. was really cool. Love the church. And wives, yeah. let me just let me just talk to you for a second. That it also talks about respecting your husband. Yeah. And, um, and there's also a scripture in Proverbs that says, oh, that I'm going to paraphrase, but it's something like... Um, a nagging wife is like a drippy faucet <laughs> and who the heck likes that so try your best and I know it's difficult sometimes when the kids are going crazy and the house is crazy but it's really important that we try not to nag our husbands but that we truly you know understand that they've been at work all day and they've been yeah. doing things and that you know they're just as worn out as we are sometimes and I know because we don't see them we don't always think about that yeah. but hey and we're doing good on time tonight so let's or maybe good. I don't think about that you guys could be totally rocking and it's just me but just in case <laughs> I had to move it my feet were falling asleep so yeah we're outside this. holding yep. it so I'm there. sorry guys okay. uh, I got the it. shaky okay, That's okay. so really anyway close. um and I'll there's a scripture sure. that says about honor and it says this in Proverbs 22 1 it says it's better to be esteemed than silver or gold yeah. so in other words the, the value of honor in your relationship is so important so when people Holding see you yourself. just just for an example um, you know when people see me honor my husband in public relationships uh, they see me give him a kiss or tell him I love him or wish him well or pray for him before his day that happens often at the coffee house People notice that. And it's like, what is that in their relationship? It is truly supernatural. It's not like, you know, the sky's opening and the angels are descending. But it does something in the hearts of people around you when they can witness the honor you have for one another. And it really can open doors to share the gospel. So yeah, absolutely. just a thought there. Especially in public places. Yeah, in public places Old especially. school stuff like opening the car door. You know, oh, get, yeah. letting the women go in first and just a little and raising our like kids that. that way too man it's great yeah. um just in case you are around the conyers area we post on our uh our website or our, our wait coffee community about a gentleman's club that jason's doing yeah. just felt like i wanted to plug that real quick um it's called uh it's it's a topic of modern day gentlemen yeah mm -hmm. yep. so um watch for that because that's a cool thing you can actually yeah. meet up with us it's and, either every and second that. or third monday it yeah. just depends on how the week falls so here's the deal. We want you to ask your spouse when they have felt honored or dishonored by yeah. you. So that's the next question. That's going to be a tough one too. And, and listen, guys, it could probably it can spark. Uh, well, I didn't, and well, uh, you did. And listen, that's not what this is about. Listen, this is about listening. You know, this is an important time for you guys to practice listening to one another right. all the way out, so that it is complete, so that you completely hear what the other person says right um, don't there's no need for retaliation it, it's not about what you did or yeah. did not do it's just about listening to your spouse right okay. so just take a minute and really talk about how you've been honored mm -hmm. and maybe how you've been dishonored sure and then 
if you find that, you know, yeah, there's some stuff that I've done to dishonor my spouse, take a moment, Mm -hmm. pray together, repent before the Lord. God, we are, you know, God, this is not our heart. We want transformation. We don't want to do these things. I don't want to dishonor my my husband. I don't want to dishonor my wife and ask God to restore those things and to transform your marriage and just really take that moment and do that. So that's the question. Take a second or a few may take a while. (laughs) Um, and, and do that. And, um, and then take a second after that and talk about maybe what words you can use to respect one another. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay, pause. We're back. Oh, back. All right, supernaturally experiencing God changes our vision. Yep. Our purpose. Yes, absolutely. How we think and how we act. Yeah, definitely. Supernatural transformation enhances our ability to receive and give love. So this is the thing, transformation gives you a, a tank full of the capability of loving others yeah. and loving your spouse. So it's empowering. So it's, yeah, it is. It's a life changer. Yeah. Transformation. Well, obviously. Hello. <laughs> it's a life changer. Transformation is a life changer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the light bulb went on for this Welcome blonde. Welcome Captain Obvious. <laughs> it's the hair, guys. I dyed it blonde and ever since then, I don't know. I'm just um, kidding. <laughs> what else? Hey, what's the homework? That's it. Homework. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is it. So this is what we're going to do for homework. You're going to read 2 Corinthians 3.18. 2 Corinthians 3.18. Mm-hmm. And as you consider the verse, talk about what transformation has occurred in you, your spouse, and both of you guys together. And then? And then. Take time. Take time. And pray together. Pray together. Thanking the Lord for those transformation yeah. pieces. Not going into to repentance. You've already done that. You yep. should have at this time. Yep. Just thank him for the things thank that he's him. done in your exactly. relationship. Yep. Bless God for it. We did it this morning. That yeah, was really nice. It was beautiful. I surprised her with it. it was beautiful. It was sweet. It was yeah. good. I love him. Right. So, and we love you guys. And we love you guys. And we hope that uh, God would just bless your marriages and bless mm-hmm. your relationships for those of you who are on the road to being married. We love you. We care about you deeply. Um, and we pray that every person that ever watches this gets a just gets a big old dose of glory. Yeah. So, we thank so you. God, we thank you for these people. We Jesus thank you name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye, guys.